uh, in these very difficult times for, you know, that we are all facing in a, in a global sense. New Zealand is a quite a unique situation, and I think it presents a very interesting case study as to how to deal with the pandemic and the effects that it has on an economy. Uh, we're a very small, isolated island nation. We've got a population of about 5 million people. It's a democratic country. We've got a, um, a fairly stable centrist government. And when the virus hit, New Zealand was able to close its borders quite quickly and make the program of self-isolation, social distancing, and really strict protocols on travel and movement. Limited our country's exposure. We ended up with only 1,500 cases and around 22 deaths. The result is that today, New Zealand has in fact removed all its internal restrictions and the population has been able to resume its normal activities. We still have very strict border controls um, and these are going to remain in place for quite some time and into the future, of course, like, like so many other countries. But our economy and our businesses are just slowly starting to return to normal. But the long-term effects obviously are going to be significant and, and our business and, and our whole social landscape is going to be changed forever. Now our business in New Zealand is a combination of um, a jewellery manufacturing operation and a large retail outlet. We specialise in, in custom bespoke work. We craft mainly in 18k and platinum and we use of course fine quality diamonds and gemstones and we've got a very loyal and widespread both local and international client base. Uh, we also design in fact for a lot of uh, major retail chains around the world. So we, we provide a design service, a consultancy, where we design collections for these companies. And, and our pieces sit in stores around the world, in China and in India, the US and, and, and Europe. So, uh, you know, the lockdown, it really created quite an unprecedented challenge. We weren't able to connect and communicate with our existing clients in, in the way that we, we could before. None of us could have foreseen this you know, the devastation that this would create in our communities and our businesses. And we've all obviously had to adapt and change in order to meet these new challenges. Now, of course, every business in every country is different. Um, the obstacles to maintaining our businesses and our communities will certainly obviously diff differ for us all. But I felt that if we shared our experiences with you of how we dealt with the lockdown and the steps we put in place, there may be some helpful tips or suggestions that, that you can incorporate into your own business today to help your recovery in these very, very difficult times. New Zealand went into full lockdown on the 26th of March, and we only had 48 hours to prepare for a complete closure to our business. We had no indication, probably like you all, of how long this lockdown was gonna last for. We managed to send all our staff home and uh, with necessary hardware for them to stay connected online and we worked solidly uh, to finalize a plan to keep all of our staff employed and, and in their jobs for as long as possible. We didn't want to lay people off. We didn't want to furlough them. Uh, we wanted to maintain our team for as long as we possibly could. Um, we're not normally a company that has people working from home. Everyone comes into the, work, the workplace and, and interacts as a team. So our big question was, how are we going to keep these people engaged productively and get something positive out of the lockdown period? We wanted to come out of lockdown a better company than when we went in. Now, obviously that presents some significant financial challenges. We were lucky in New Zealand that we had a government that um, provided a wage subsidy during the lockdown period. And uh, this, this went a significant way to meeting the shortfall for the wages and salaries we had to keep paying, of course, with no income coming in. But of course, we still had to uh, maintain those salaries and top them up ourselves. So there were some you know, considerable strains upon the business. But being around for, for over 40 years, we've built up a good credit history with our bank. And this was very crucial uh, in, in keeping ourselves going and keeping afloat during this very important time. Uh, and, and I think that's one of the crucial things is that you do need to maintain very solid contact with your credit sources, with your banks, um, I'm sure that's, that's a very common sense thing, but I can't un, uh, under of what you need to do to maintain those lines. And uh, it's something that we should all work very, very hard on. Now, as a manufacturing and a retail business, we've worked really hard over the last decade to build a multifaceted business that supports our really key objectives of designing and building fine jewelry. 
Uh, we've got several craftsmen that work in our workshop. We try to incorporate the latest manufacturing techniques. We've, we've got, of course, all the laser welding, engraving systems, 3D printing. Uh, we've got a dedicated uh, CAD design team. And of course, that human element, um, designers who just hand draw beautiful sketches uh, to present to our clients. We've got a great, wonderful frontline staff as far as retail is concerned. They deal directly with our, our clients. And we've got a marketing team that handles all the online communications. Now, New Zealand went straight into what we call a stage four lockdown, which is the most severe restrictions that we could. We all had to stay completely in our homes. We weren't able to get out and socialize. Uh, the only things that of course were open like so many countries were just pharmacies and supermarkets and under very, very strict uh, conditions. So it meant we weren't even able to fulfill any online orders or leave our home to, to get to work to do those things. So it was really, really crucial for us to ensure our website was continuously updated with relevant information and messaging. And having, of course, a very good website and the ability to connect with your clients is so, so important during these times. Um, so this meant we had to maintain daily communications with our marketing team to ensure that all our client inquiries were handled in a really prompt and timely manner. Getting back to clients quickly uh, and promptly during this period was crucial. What we did find is that being locked down, it actually gave us extra time to reply to these customers in a more considered manner. Um, you know, if the, the store was open, you don't really get as much time to think perhaps as extensively as you would and how you can connect with your customers. So we spent a lot of time carefully crafting replies to our customers to make sure that they were aware of just the situations and how we were trading. Now, by acknowledging the environment that we were all in as a country and listening carefully to those customers' questions um, and taking the time to really create empathetic and um, well-designed replies to the customers, um, we've actually been able to grow our online business quite significantly during this period. And that was quite an achievement. Um, we've now adopted the same very considered and lengthy response to our clients as a standard part in our business. Our replies, we believe, have always been very good, but the extra time and care we took has really paid dividends. I think having somebody in your communication team who has got good online communication skills and can reply in a very timely and considered and friendly manner will certainly help you during your business. Now, during that lockdown period, of course, large parts of our teams were not able to conduct their, their normal daily work. But the, our retail, our administration staff, the jewelers themselves were really able to make great use of the amazing tutorials and videos that were made available by the likes of the GIA, AGS, MJSA, De Beers. All of these organizations offered great training courses, things that they would normally charge for for free. So we, we took advantage of those and we tasked the staff with gaining knowledge, skills, and improving our IT systems and processes to help build our resilience for a return post-COVID. Our management team worked full-time during this period, keeping all the staff engaged, <coughs> excuse me, and learning on a very daily program. So we reduced the staff down to working hours to 80% of their normal time. And we spent um, a lot of time building team activities and knowledge sharing. But we also made the time to have some relaxed team meetings, purely for social time, just uh, putting business to one side. We used Microsoft Teams, we used Zoom. And uh, at the end of a normal working week, we would often catch up with our staff for a drink on a Friday, uh, have a chat, download, talk about the week, and just discuss what everybody had been doing. And that's, that was always a very valuable part of our working week. Um, it enabled the team to kind of interact and, and, and build together. So by doing a end of work catch up, we did that virtually. We all connected on Zoom. We got together on a Friday night at 5.30. Everyone sat down with a drink. We, we kind of connected and just shared stories and, and what we'd been doing in the week. And it really helped to build that team spirit. It worked out extremely well. Doing the, the online training during the day is hard. Um, 
for some people it was more successful than others. You're not going to get everybody taking that up, but a lot of your staff will. Some had challenges with the IT, uh, some people have family commitments, and so it was very hard. For others, it was just simply a case not to participate. But all in all, the vast majority of our staff took part and it, and it worked very, very well. Now, of course, for all of our, our businesses, customers are our lifeblood. It doesn't matter where you sit in the jewelry industry, what kind of business that you have, the key to our ongoing success is, is obviously our customers. That's just, that's common sense, of course. We obviously realized if they couldn't get into our store, we wanted to ensure we could get out and visit them. Online is obviously the key during this time. And I'm sure all of you are very aware of this and are, and are participating in that side of things. But online made this absolutely imperative that we, we worked very hard on this whole side of things. Our social media and, and website channels were, were key to this, of course. And we reached out to our clients and we decided to go and create very positive, fun messaging, not necessarily about trying to sell jewelry. We wanted to connect with our customers and tell stories. Instead of a monthly newsletter, we, we never like to bombard our customers with information, but we needed to, in this particular case, send out weekly um, emails, newsletters, talking about what was going on. And we wanted that messaging that we were sending out to the customers to be fun and positive and, and done in such a way as to engage the customers and really brighten their day. So we try to think of alternative approaches that uh, were drill related, but not necessarily sales related. Um, for instance, we challenged all our staff to build an engagement ring at home. And I hope you can sort of see these images on, online here at the moment. We challenged our teams at home to build an engagement ring from whatever materials that they had on hand. And the results were crazy. It was fantastic fun. We had rings made, as you can see, from a champagne cork. We had um, one ring there. We think it's about 150 carats that uh, young L is holding there. So, uh, you know, a ring carved out of a carrot. Uh, there were rings made from tissue paper and silver foil. Really fun things. And then we posted all of those pictures online and we challenged customers to create their own rings. And, and we had some fantastic results and some really fun, positive interactions. So these are things that you can uh, kind of do just to, to make people's lives more fun and, and, and these very tough and, and um, torrid times a bit of a bright light. So, you know, design and build is, is, is a massive part of our business. Creating bespoke items for our customers is, is really what, at the heart of what we do. And so we needed to create new ways to connect with our customers and get through to, to even a new and bigger, um, you know, client base. So we figured, well, how can we remove any normal barriers and, 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 and make people want to connect with us so that they weren't anxious or hesitating? And so what we did is we decided to offer our normal design service during the lockdown period completely free of charge. Um, we offered a free Zoom or Skype consultation with one of our designers, and we set to work creating some really simple concepts to communicate our design ideas. Normally what we do is we create beautifully hand-drawn sketches, they're colored, they take a lot of time, and we use those to entice customers into the, the, the business. But in this case, we just went to very simple, quick sketches, pencil sketches, one-dimensional, that would actually create a shape and an idea for a customer uh, and hopefully then begin that relationship with you. And the results were incredible. We received inquiries from all across New Zealand and we followed up on them all. And normally, of course, we would charge to do that, to create a design and then develop a CAD render and, and then print a 3D model of it uh, so that they could try it on. During lockdown, we did all of that for free. Um, sounds crazy, it was a risk, but you know the bigger risk is actually not doing anything. And the uptake on the process was amazing. We had over a 70% acceptance rate out of this approach and it worked tremendously well. And that process opened up a whole new market. Um, you know, we're actually still working on jobs in our workshop right now, building pieces for customers, two and a half months later um, from designs we created during that lockdown period. So we're fortunate to have built up a large base of clients and lockdown actually gave us an opportunity to grow that even further. Um, so New Zealand is now 
quietly opening up again, but it's still gonna be a very different environment to the one that was pre-COVID. We believe customers that, you know, perception of value is gonna be changed forever by these, these global events. Time makes people more focused on what's important to them. And they think more about creating significant pieces of jewelry that have connections, um, and that can tell their story. And, and by approaching our responses to our customers and focusing on this side of things, rather than price and cost, um, we found we got a much better intake. You know, we've also witnessed uh, an increasing interest in customers wanting to restore and recycle family pieces. And by offering the service, we've found that our clients become very connected to our business. It's led them to then recommend us to other friends and families for brand new purchases. So it has some great spin-off effects. Now, we remain really focused on creating meaningful experiences with our customers. Um, you know, we, we really try to focus on explaining the whole designing and crafting experiences, and we document that for them. You know, we actually film and video our jewelers crafting the jewelry, um, the whole design process, and we present a portfolio to the customer when they, they collect their jewelry, a digital portfolio, a diary of how their piece has been made. And, and this has a significant benefit. People absolutely love it. It's a simple tool, but it's something that you can use to uh, think about adding value to the experience that you're giving to your customers. You know, people still get engaged, people will still get married, they're still gonna celebrate special memories and events in their lives. And I think by communicating with them in a really meaningful way, both online and, and in store, when you can open your stores again, um, we're all gonna be able to continue to survive and, and craft and create beautiful jewelry for our customers. And one of the other things is that we have always been very, very focused on innovation. We try to think of new design ideas, we try to think of new concepts and, and new ways of creating jewelry. And I'm very, very happy to say that uh, in conjunction with Dunn Man and Dunn, we're soon to give release a really exciting new technique and in a diamond cut, we've patented this and it creates a diamond set in jewelry that has no visible clasps or edgings. The diamonds just literally appear to float in the jewelry. It's an incredibly exciting development. Um, it's a combination of space age technologies and metals, ultra fine engineering and, and, and expert craftsmanship. It's 21st century approach to setting diamonds and jewelry. Um, the world's never seen anything like it before and it's only with being the fantastic help and support of Daman and Dan that we've actually been able to bring this piece together. Now, unfortunately, uh, the pandemic, we were gonna be releasing this at JCK just to show you all and, and uh, give you something really new and exciting that you can showcase to your customers and um, really excite them about something very new in the diamond industry. It's not just a new cut of diamond, it's, it's about actually how a diamond is held. And we know it's going to be um, it's going to be huge. It's going to open up massive opportunities for designers, for manufacturers, and diamond in general. And we're hoping it's going to really make people excited about diamond again, in a new way that we're going to be able to create great looks and great ideas, and combine that with really good design. It'll enable designers to just think up wonderful new ideas and concepts. So that's a really positive development, and we're really looking forward to sharing that with uh, the whole world at a time when hopefully we can all be traveling again, getting to the shows and uh, catching up to have great discussions and talking about what we're all doing with our businesses. So thank you all very much. I wish you all the very best. I hope that uh, you are coping with uh, the stresses and strains that we're all under, but we will get through it. And I think the new exciting world that we'll enter into, um, it's gonna be different, but we're all gonna be better. So all the very best to you all. So thank you very much, Ian and uh, Inspired team. It was very uh, uh, good insight and it can be a good learning to all of us uh, who are uh, present in the jewelry industry. So uh, there are a few questions accumulated uh, uh, into chat also, and uh, there are some questions is prepared by our, our staff also. So the first question says, what is your single most learning during this pandemic? Um, it's a good question, Pippo. Uh, I think the thing that really has come out of this is the importance of the customer relationships. 
and how we communicate with our customers. Um, as I said earlier, look, none of us have got a business without our, our customer base. And by staying connected with them, we've been able to keep our business going. Uh, and I think that's absolutely crucial. It's connecting with our customers. It's too easy to take our, our client base for granted, really. We're, when we're all very busy and things are happening, uh, we kind of carry on. But we forget that the core of our success comes back to our customers. So I think the single biggest thing is it's really reinforced for us that staying in communication with our customers, keeping our relationships going, uh, and making those more positive than ever is absolutely key to the success of our business. Sorry, Vipul. Um, yeah, sorry for that. It's a technical <laughs> glitch. So uh, we want to know that how it will impact the consumer sentiment and their view toward the jewelry. I think this is going to have a significant impact on the consumer reaction to jewellery in general. I think what's really going to do is reinforce the very old-fashioned, um, meaningful ways as to why people buy jewellery. I think what we are going to see less of is just buying jewellery uh, for the sake of price or uh, a sale or you know a discounted aspect. I think the commodity trading days of jewellery are, are under threat. I think uh, consumers' perception of value is going to be very, very different. I think they're going to search for jewellery that has deeper meaning, um, that is good value. And good value is just not price. It's about jewellery that has been well-designed, that's been well-crafted, uh, that, that carries a story and a meaning for that customer. And I think uh, you know, companies that are creating jewellery that has more significance along those lines where their salespeople can tell their story and talk about the background and why the design came about and how important that is in terms of the customer. Uh, so that I think for us as jewelers, we need to focus more on the true value of jewelry. And the true value is not the dollar price. It's about how good that jewelry is being designed and crafted and what kind of story it has behind it. Uh, I think those are the things that consumers are going to be looking for because there's an abundance of material out there that it's just sold as a commodity and on price. And I don't believe that that is going to have much of a future going forward. There's always a place for it, of course, but I think the significant sales and the better sales uh, for good jewelry around the world are going to come from companies that can tell their story, their history, their value proposition in a different way that customers resonate with that and then really appreciate the piece of jewelry for what it is as a beautiful object that has some meaning to them and not just something that's sold on price. True, and I'm sure that, you know, I have seen your designs and it's absolutely, um, you're right that, you know, design will uh, ultimately speak about your uh, craftsmanship. There is a one question from the uh, the audience that uh, they want to know more about floating diamonds and how they didn't get it. I mean, they want to see that, you know, what is the concept and how, how, how they want to, I mean, they want to know more about the floating diamonds, if you can share. <laughs> well, there's a lot of it, of course, that uh, really has to be seen to be believed. And as far as the technical release of it, which I think really showcases how it will be, uh, we, we're kind of having to keep that under wraps a little bit at the moment, but what it will be is primarily it's focused upon round brilliant cut solitaires. So you will be able to have diamond ear studs, for instance, uh, tennis bracelets, necklaces, drop earrings, a solitaire diamond ring. Now with all, all deference to, of course, probably the most famous solitaire in the world in 1886, Tiffany himself launched a solitaire, a six floor solitaire, which is still being sold today. Uh, that's a great testament in, in so many ways to a very, very good piece of design. But it's quite tragic in some ways, really, that since 1886, there hasn't been a great deal of development and change in, in diamonds. So what we've been able to do is create, if you can imagine the Tiffany Diamond Solitaire with its six claws being visible, you'll be able to purchase that, uh, that diamond shortly between Daman and Dun and, and us uh, so that those claws uh, the diamond is in fact held from underneath in a brand new patented setting. It's 
actually scientifically proven after years of tests to be in fact far stronger and longer lasting than a conventional claw setting. So uh, yeah, we're really excited about where this can go. It's, as I say, it's a combination of uh, space age metallurgy, a lot of science, a lot of engineering, and then combining that with classic materials. So uh, it's, it is extremely exciting. The diamonds will be available obviously via, you know, through, through Dunan and Dunn, and um, it'll give jewelers around the world an opportunity to start thinking in whole new ways about how they can showcase that diamond to their customers. So we can't give away all the secrets of the patent and, uh, and all the parts behind it, but what we can assure everybody is that uh, when they do see this diamond and they understand how safe it is, how strong it is, how much better for the consumer it is, then uh, yeah, we know they'll be queuing up uh, for you, Vipul, to, to be buying it. Thank you, Jan. Uh, uh, so it's a time to actually, we are, uh, uh, we are a uh, few minutes left and what is your advice to the advanced uh, audience uh, about, uh, you know, how they can be prepared or how they, they can be safe their people and what is your single advice to the audience about current situations of uh, the COVID-19? Look, it's obviously an extremely difficult time for everybody and uh, I think the whole thing is about we're, we're, where we sit in life. It's about maintaining being positive. Um, this is one of the biggest hurdles our industry has ever faced. Um, it is extremely difficult, but I think we all have to maintain a sense of positivity. Um, there is always light at the end of the tunnel. I know these are cliches, but it is true. I think the more positive we are in our own personal outlooks, um, the more we are kind to other people and looking after other people uh, and, and being kind to ourselves. Um, you know, a lot of us are in situations that we could never have predicted uh, through no fault of our own, our businesses might financially be under stress. Uh, but there are always ways around this. Get help, get advice. Um, we have a great industry. We're very, very lucky to be part of it. Don't forget why you are a part of it. It shouldn't ever be just about the money. Uh, it should be about wanting to make beautiful things and making people's lives better by creating and selling beautiful things. And I think if you keep that outlook in your life, uh, not just about your business, but about your personal approach, how you deal with other people and how you look at things generally, um, then your life will be full. So, uh, yeah, but that's, that's really all I can say. Just keep positive, keep smiling, and uh, there will, yeah, there's a way out of it. Just, just keep going. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ian and Inspired team, uh, for your uh, valuable time. Uh, we really appreciate and we look forward to see you, see you and Floating Diamond in the market very soon.